Hello and welcome to Chapter 5. Please turn your books to page 349. We're here with third period today in the computer lab because we just finished our test. Yay. So we have not, this is second period, correct. We only have 20 minutes to get through this, so we're going to go kind of quickish. All right. So expressions. We are finally actually getting into, and feel free to turn your chairs all the way around if you want. Um, we're getting truly into algebraic expressions and algebra now. The, I, I learned this on Friday, that this class is actually called seventh grade math. It's no longer called pre-algebra with the new curriculum since I taught pre-algebra several years ago. So vocabulary setup. A variable is a symbol that represents an unknown quantity. So it's something that varies, hence the word variable. We don't know what it is, but it can represent other things. An algebraic expression, such as n plus 2, is an expression that contains variables, numbers, and at least one operation. An operation is multiplication, division, subtraction, um, an exponent, that sort of thing. Um, the variable n, now see it says n because it's representing a number. A lot of times when you have a variable, it's going to start with the first letter of whatever that variable could be. And we'll see that throughout this, this lesson. Write each of the following phrases in the correct section of the Venn diagram. Um, contains an operation, has variables and numbers, and only has numbers. A numerical expression is the only one that just has numbers. Only numbers. And that's a pound symbol, not a hashtag. I guess I don't need a apostrophe there. An algebraic expression has variables and numbers. Has variables and numbers. And then that leaves contains an operation. Well, I spelled operation last period wrong. Both of them have an operation. So a Venn diagram, just remember, if it's in a circle, it has that trait. If it's in multiple circles, or ovals in this case, it has both of them have that trait. The expression f, or the quantity of f minus 32, multiplied by 5 ninths, can be used to convert temperature from Fahrenheit into Celsius. So for every other country in the world, except for two that use uh, Celsius, and science uses Celsius. This is an algebraic expression where the variable f represents the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So we can go from any degree Fahrenheit to today's high is 86. So we can work that out too, see what it is in uh, Celsius. Yeah. It's, I think, in the Pacific Ocean. Um, it used to be a territory after World War II of the United States. I'm not, I'm, no. We, we had a lot of we had a lot of area over there. I would look it up, but we got to get moving. There's it's either it's definitely one other. It might be two. It's a tiny country. It'd be really funny if the state of Marica in uh, in Spain had that because it's like Marica. To evaluate an algebraic expression. Now evaluate is to answer. It's another way of saying answer it or to change its form. The branch of mathematics that involves expressions with variables is called algebra. In algebra, mul the multiplication sign is often omitted. Since we're using variables, <clears throat> 6d equals 6 multiplied by or times d. 9st is 9 times s times t. mn means m times n. a cubed means a times a times a. Any questions on that? That was, that was an interesting concept for a couple people last period. The numerical factor of multiplication expression states that uh, states that can, uh, expression that contains a variable is called a coefficient. Think of the two parts of that word. The beginning of it is co, which means with something else. Efficient means it's going to make it affect it. Or effect, efficient make it. Um, that really wouldn't work with that suffix, but. To make it more, um, to make it work better, I guess you could say. So six is the coefficient of six d. So it's the number that's hanging out with the letter. 
Yeah. It's the most, well, I have a strap back here, so it's the most comfortable way to drink without getting my mask wet. Expressions like y over 2 can be written as y divided by 2 or x times 1 over 2. Right here, this is from the test that you guys just took. That is the multiplicative inverse or the multiply by reciprocal. Does that sound familiar? Multiply by the reciprocal. That's how we did division. One, evaluate two times the quantity n plus three if n is equal to negative three. So evaluate means we're just going to plug in what the value of n is. In red there, it shows that n is inside the parentheses. You're going to be using uh, the order of operations a whole bunch in this chapter. And also, as a reminder, guess what you can use this chapter? Calculators, yes. Mm -hmm. So the n gets substituted for negative 4. So it's 2 times the quantity negative 4 plus 3. We're going into chapter 3 here. So it's n times 2, sorry, 2 times negative 1. That comes out to be negative 2. Because when you multiply a negative times a positive, it comes out negative. Evaluate 8w minus 2v. So this one has two different variables if w equals 5 and v equals 3. So we have the red with w, the blue with 3. We substitute those in there. We have 8 times 5 minus 2 times 3, because that would be 40 minus 6, which is just 34. So I'll tell you that in a second. So now we have evaluate 4y cubed plus 2, if y equals 3. y is 3. We have to use the order of operations. Please excuse. My dear Aunt Sally, excuse is exponents. So we do the 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. Then we do the multiplication. 4 times 27 is going to be 108. Yep. Plus 2 is 110. With that in mind, I would like you to please do A through F. I'm going to start 15 seconds after you start. If you run into trouble, look up here. So go ahead and start that.
you may not have wrote down all the stuff that I did. However, since I'm demonstrating, I wrote down every little step. Every step you... Yes, sir? Nope. I'll explain that in just a second. I'll explain that in just a second. Does anybody have a question about A, B, C, or D? Okay, for the question is E, and this is a good question. Uh, this goes back to chapter 3. We have a negative 5 minus 64. We did the multiplicative, or not the multiplicative inverse. We did the additive inverse. So I can see that I am at a negative 5 and I'm becoming more negative. Because plus means more. Mm -hmm. But you could also look at it just by doing the one in the middle here. You could also look at it this way. If you're at negative 5 and you're subtracting on a number line, going to the left, 64, you're going to end up at a negative 69. Any questions on D? Some people get that wrong. It's because they forget that when you multiply a negative times a negative, negative times negative becomes positive. If you have an odd number of negatives, it's going to be negative. Athletic trainers use the formula 3 times the quantity of 20, 220 minus A over 5, where A is a person's age. So see how it's age is letter A? And it's usually a lowercase number. Or sorry, the lowercase letter. It's a lowercase letter. Um, to find their minimum training heart rate, so you're actually burning calories. Find uh, Latrina's minimum heart rate if she's 15 years old. So they just plugged in A and worked out that using the order of operations. I did mine last period as a 37-year-old. It's 109.8 beats per minute. And as, as you get older, it gets less because the heart isn't as good. So right now, I want to know my heart rate. All right, well, it doesn't want to do my heart rate right now. Okay. Um, so for this one, to find an area of a triangle, we use the formula base times height over 2. That's B and H, where B is the base and H is the height. So we have base is 8, height is 6. So we're just going to evaluate that by doing base 8 times 6 over 2, which is 48 over 2. And they're asking us to find it in square inches. So we have inches squared because it's area. Class gets out at 44. Okay. To translate a verbal phrase into an algebraic expression, the first step is to define the variable. When you define a variable, you choose a variable to represent an unknown quantity. So the unknown quantity that could change depending on whatever it is. The same way that all of you are not all the same age. You might all be 12, some of you might be uh, 13, or you might all be 12. So this one is very dated when a DVD player costs 150 bucks. So Marissa wants to buy a DVD player for $150. She already saved $25 and plans to save an additional $10 a week. Write an expression that represents the total amount of money Marissa saved after any number of weeks. So she can see how close it is. She has her original 25. She has her original 25. She's doing 10 per week. So 10 each week. So it eventually get to 150. So it's 25 plus 10W represents her total number of weeks. Now to <clears throat> jump through this next one, after 11 weeks, which is W, she still didn't have enough. She's only had 135 of the $150 for her phone plan. That would be more up to date. Um, yeah, but she'll have $5 extra. Maybe she can buy from the dollar DVD rack. I don't know. So we have, that's fast. We have five minutes. Okay. Um, we're going to skip H for right now because I want you guys to do one through five 
I want you to do one through five right now, and I'm going to start as soon as you start. That way, the video can get the example. And then um, I'll pass out the homework, and you guys will be out of here. One of the strategies I like to do is to separate out the variables vertically, just so I don't mess those up. You guys are talking a lot for working on this. Are you watching or are you working on it like you were supposed to? My instructions were clear. You guys work on those five. I'm going to start it right now as well so it can be recorded for the video. be posted in 15 minutes. Oh, okay. It only takes about 10 minutes to upload to YouTube. One of the big issues that people had with number three last period was they were uh, not having it be negative. And this part right here would be something that you would use a calculator for. Yeah, this chapter and I believe the rest of the class, the rest of the school year you can.